So, functional method um, for each. For each is, so all these functional methods work on arrays, right? So for each is a method that invoke a callback, a synchronous callback, once for each element of an iterable. So they work on array, but actually they work on everything that is iterable like arrays. In this moment, we have just seen arrays that are iterables. So for instance, in this case, we get a string, a word, we spread it in an array. So each uh, position of an array will have one letter, basically. And then we say, for each letter, for each letter, so for each element of that array, that, that will be a letter, what we're going to do? We're going to create a string. We're going to concatenate the string, each letter, uppercase, concatenated in the string that is called uppercase. So the results will be that for each letter, we will put it uppercase, and then we will store it in a variable that is initialized as a string. So H will be capital, the first round, and E will be put capital, L will be put capital, etc., etc., and the result is stored in this variable that's called uppercase, and then we get the uppercase L word. So a way to iterate, like you did with four, but in a functional way, and again, in this case, there is no change to the letters array. Any change is in another portion, in another variable, in another, func in another function, another array, in another thing. And this is for each. Um, for each can have three parameters. The first, that is the mandatory one, like in this case, letter, is the current value. So the value that is processed by the iteration each letter in our case. Then you can have other two index, other two parameters, index, that is optional, that give you the index of the current value in the array. So not only H, like the first letter, but also zero as the index of that first letter. And also you can pass, you can also have an array, there's a third parameter, that is the array for which for each is called for. So most of the time, you have just current value. Sometime, if you need the index, you also have the index. This is the parameter of the callback. Uh, for each, doesn't change the, the parameter, doesn't change the array, uh, and doesn't return the things you iterated on, but it returns undefined. And since it returns undefined, it's not chainable. You cannot chain a for each with another functional method. And also, there is no way to stop a for each loop, except then throwing an exception. Hmm? Uh, for each does not mutate the array as any functional method, but the callback might be mutating the array. It shouldn't, but according to the callback, it's not prohibited that the callback mutate the array. In the example before, we didn't. We stored the results outside of the function, but if, if you want, with all the, the care of the case, you can also mutate the array within the for each, passing the array as third parameter and mutating it directly. Yes. Is there a chance to uh, make an infinite loop by doing this, just like adding a character? Oh, yes. Okay. Imagine that you can add, you do a, a callback, which you read every letter, and for every letter you add it again, and then you iterate always some letters, so yes, you can do. So when you manipulate, so overall, changing the array that you are manipulating is a bad idea, always. 
also with normal methods, right? Changing the rate that you are that you are iterating on, hmm? because you can have strange behavior, also strange behavior, not only uh, in this case infinite loop, but you can. I mean, you can do uh, four uh, elements of array, uh, change the elements or add on elements. You can do it in, in four. It's, it's not a great idea, but you can do it always. So, so every every test whether all the elements in an array passed a satisfy condition. And so in this case, you have a, an array that is one, two, three, four, five, and you want to test true or false whether each element is lesser than 10. So x is one element at a time, so iterate in for each element and one is minor than 10, 2 is minor than 10, and in this case the result is true because all the elements are minor than 10. Hmm? So the callback here, that is a, a narrow function in this case, has the same argument of for each. It always returns a Boolean value, true or false, true if it's the text is successful, false is not. Uh, and it executes the callback uh, once for each element until it finds that elements that return a false value hmm? so the one that is not satisfying the condition hmm? so in this case if we have 1 2 3 11 it will be executed 1 2 3 at 11 it will be stop the execution no matter how long is the array after that point because it will find the one element that will make the condition false and so it stop checking hmm? so when the element is found the element that not satisfy the test it will immediately return false hmm? so this is checking is everything satisfying a condition or is everything not or it's something not satisfying the condition sum is similar to every but check whether at least one element in the array passes the test It always returns a Boolean value, and if find an element, it will immediately return. So every test, if everything satisfy condition, some test if there is at least one that satisfy the condition. So if this one is the first element, it will just end the execution after the first element, and it's working like the every. And these are iterating on the array and checking conditions, then we have map. Map is the first of the two elements that generate, the first methods that generate a new array. The other one is filter, we have said before. Uh, map takes uh, each element of the array on which it invoked and pass to each element, execute for each element the function, the callback you executed. The callback in map should return a value and map always return a new array containing the values returned by the callback. So let's use this as an example. We have an array with three numbers, one, two, three, very simple array. We do map that for each element of the array it takes the element and multiply it by itself. So how it's working? Get one and do one plus one per one. Multiply the one and store the results in another array and store one, clearly. Then two. Two multiply two, four, and store the results in another array, in the array, in a separate array, the one before. And then do it for the third element, 3 multiply 3, 9, and also get this 9 and put it in the other array. Since the array is completed, then it returns the new array containing 1, 4, 9. The elements multiplied by itself, one at a time. Hmm? So you can do with map manipulation on array without changing the array in place, but returning always a new array. And that could be multiplication, or it could be putting all the letter uppercase, like we have seen 
in the uh, for for each hmm? but in this case instead of storing things in a variable that we have to define all these will be put in a, another array with all the letters in uppercase so for each letter map pick the letter put it uppercase and store it in the array that needs to be returned hmm? so in the end this uppercase will be an array that contains hello world one position of the array per letter all the letter capital hmm? and this join is a, a method for arrays that join arrays according to some delimiter in this case according to no delimiter so it joins everything hmm? in the array and then there is filter that we mentioned before filters again like map creates a new array but in this case with all the element that passes the test hmm? so they are similar to every and some because they check a condition but they, this is also similar to map in which it give you the array with the elements that pass the condition hmm? so in this case with filter the callback should return either true or false because it's a condition hmm? like map map should return a value filter should return true or false and if no element pass the test the array is empty hmm? the returning array is empty hmm? so again how it's work you have a callback that should return true or false so in this case it's a callback in defined in the body of the, in the as a parameter you can also define a function outside and then use it inside the filter but typically for short function you do like this and this say that the new array should contain all the elements that are minor than three hmm? so in this case five will not be included because it's not minor than three four will not be included three will not be included and two and one will be included so the new array coming out from filter hmm, const b equal a dot filter will contain one and two two and one in this order hmm, in the same order that you find in the original array and filter like um, uh, every etc can have a second parameter since it's iterate on the array that does not give you only the callback can have a second parameter that is not the first parameter, the default one, the mandatory one, is the element, the name of the elements to iterate, x, element, letter, whatever you want to call it. And you can have a second parameter that is index, that is the index of the array. Because, you know, in this case, it's checking if the index satisfy a condition, not if the content of the array satisfy a condition. And here, these are all simple checks, but you can have also more complicated checks. Hmm? So, most of the time, filter is used in a simple way. Element minus the tree, element equal to another element, etc. But you can, it's a function, so you can make it as complex as needed, if you want. Hmm? So, you have the index, you have the elements, you can check one or the other or both. So, to summarize, for each iterates on the array and you have to decide what to do while iterating every test whether uh, the content of the array satisfy or not a given condition and return true or false some check if at least one element satisfies the condition and return true or false map allow you to modify the array whatever you want and return a new array filter will give you a new array with the elements that satisfy any given condition that return true or false. Yes. Because in the second position. So this this called element and this called index, but you can call it A and B yeah. or X and I. There's just name that you want. It's the order that matter. The first things, the first that is the mandatory one is the element, and the second one is the index. Um, there should be the third one like before that is the full array and finally there is a more complicated functional method 
that's called the reduce it's more complicated because it has a few more uh, parameters it's still working like a functional method so it receives a callback and do spins so the idea of reduce is that you have an array and you want so let me add one thing uh, for each is widely used map is widely used also in simple programs filter is widely used reduced is used maybe not as widely as uh, filter or map because it's more suited for a specific set of jobs which is combining the element of an array to produce a single value in a way reducing the array from n elements to one and this is a common operation in functional programming actually this is reducing that's called uh, inject and fold but it's not really important the things that the reduce can pick the elements of an array combine them in some way and produce one result from that and reduce has two arguments the uh, callback that's called the reducer function that performs the reduction the combination hmm, of the uh, elements so combine or reduce multiple values into one and an optional initial value to pass to the function hmm, to start the reduction if it's not specified it uses the first element of the array as the initial value and the iteration starts from the second element hmm. so one case in which reduce uh, can be useful is for instance to uh, sum the values of an array to perform the product of an array of the elements of an array to get the largest value to do of an array to do um, um, average calculation with numbers is very very versatile clearly because you have a lot of numbers you want to reduce it in one according to some criteria addition multiplication subtraction average some mathematical operation um, but differently from the other methods in which you have in the callback the element and optionally the index here you have and again the position is the one that's important not the name here the first argument is the accumulated result so far hmm? so think about doing a addition of five elements hmm? you do the sum of the first two and then you need to store temporary the result somewhere and then you add the third element to these results and then you add the fourth element to these results hmm? so these accumulated partial results is the first parameter uh, the second parameter is the current value the current value of the iteration so if we want to let's imagine we want to do the sum of all of these with reduce so we will generate a callback with two parameters the accumulator again the, the results the temporary result and the current value the value that is iterating on the array and what we're going to do is the accumulator plus the current value and then we have another parameter additional to the callback that is the initial value this one that is outside of the callback so it takes two arguments the callback and an initial value that if not defined is again the first element of the array but you can define it as you want so in the saw so, in the sum it could be zero for instance hmm? so how it works it works that this initial value is put in the accumulator and the current value is five so it's doing zero plus five that is five and the results is inserted in the accumulator next iteration the current value is four the accumulator is five so five plus four nine the results in the accumulator next iteration three nine plus three the results in the accumulator next iteration two 
the current value is 2, the results plus 2, and then the results plus 1, and since the array is over, it will return a value here that is 15. Same things for if you want to do the multiplication. And again, you see here there is another name, but it's the position that matters. So the first element is the accumulator, and the second element of the callback is the current value. And this does the multiplication. So the first initial value is 1, because otherwise it will not do the multiplication correctly if it's 0. And so you have 1 <coughs> multiplied 5, and then the results in the accumulator, and then 4, 5 multiplied 4, and 20 is the accumulator, and then 20 per 3, and then the results in the accumulator, etc., etc., etc. And in the end, it will return 120. And here, you can also compute the largest value, in which you check the accumulated value and the value itself, but here you don't put the accumulated value of the results, the accumulated results, but just the bigger of the two. So you can also perform this. So the accumulator is the one that you move from one iteration to the other. The current value is what you have in that single iteration in the array to do some comparison, calculation, operation, etc. Okay, so there this is slightly different from the other, a little bit more complicated because it has this optional mm, initial value to use if you want, and has two parameters in the callback. And the callback should, re callback should return the accumulator, always. Hmm? That is passed to the next iteration. Hmm? So here there is a picture that just gives you a visual representation of the uh, array methods, uh, in which you see map that transform squares into circles and filter filters for squares, and so on, you get only that. You can also find or find the index. These are methods of the array, not all of them are um, functional, just meet of the array, hmm? in which every uh, will return false because there are um, circles and some will return true because there is at least one square here. So this is a graphic representation of what we have seen. And the reduce clearly is not intelligible as a representation because it's a combination of the elements in the, uh, in the array. Hmm. And here there is an example with uh, chaining the results in which to compute the average of these cars, of the price of these cars, it does, of the SUV, only the SUVs of these cars, so not all of them, it will first filter for this, the type of car and then it will just get the prices because we don't care about the make, the model and the type anymore if we want to compute the average price and then we reduce everything to calculate the average price of this the specific type of car that we are interested in and this is chaining because the array is the beginning vehicles and then we chain a filter a map and a reduce and all the output of filter is passed to map and the, out the output of map is passed to reduce and in the end the results is put in the average price hmm? and and this if you copy and paste this in Visual Studio Code this sh should work hmm? okay so any questions up to now yes uh, in the function that we passed you use an example to the, <coughs> to the example. Uh, this one Um, so the i is not used, but the array is. So after, so in the functional method, like for every, I didn't say that actually, but um, so for all the functional method except to re reduce, the first element of the callback is the current element, and then you can have two arguments optional: the index and the array that you are using in the function operation. In the reduce, it's the same, but Instead of having the element, you have the accumulator and the element. So the third element is the index, and the fourth element is the entire array. And since here it's using the entire array, uh, 
we need to write i because otherwise array will have will be the index as a variable and it doesn't make sense to do the array the length of the number okay so, but yeah but yes all, all these elements as a uh, other two parameters optional one is the index and the other one is the entire array that you are using and so in this case the array is vehicle is not vehicle is the array coming out from map okay so let's try to use some functional method here in the exercise so how can we so let me call this find and I will change the exercise I prefer so how do we Uh, how do we change the find to find the name of the authors of the answer using functional method? Hmm? Without for each, there is a shorter way with filter yes so what I'm going to write <coughs> dot filter and then oh. so let me close this the browser for a moment because we don't really need it okay so it's bigger um, okay so what we are going to filter Oh, yes, we can call it answer or answer because it's the element, you know, it's, it's a single answer for sure. And then we need a callback. So this is the parameter. Do we need the index? No. Answer dot name triple equals to name. And that's it. This is functionally equivalent to the code we wrote before mm. so filter iterate on all the answers array and for each element that we called answer but we can call it one or element or whatever is checking if the name of the answer is the same of the name passed as a parameter and if they are it will return it will return a new array that contains only the value that are needed and the question was about miss the return that was missing okay yes so we condensate a for and an if and the needed to create a temporary array to to do the operation with one line and so one filter and a callback that does everything for us including creating a temporary rate return okay so let's implement the other method uh, add we did it can we do add in a functional way should we do add in a functional way no good uh, we did find after date so this dot after date um, date hmm. so after date should return an array of answers with the answers after a given date So, what we're going to write using for each, every, sum, filter, map, or reduce. Six options. Pick one. Filter. Okay, filter is the right option. So, return 
these dot answers like before dot filter and what we're going to filter uh, yes sorry I forgot the arrow we can do you can do a comparison of date so uh, answer so a comparison of date we want to check if a date is after another date and is if after we want to keep the uh, the current answer hmm? so can I change screen can I change screen or your writing so DJS has a function to compare dates that is called uh, is after there is also is before but in this case we want a date that is after other dates so is after is the right one and I just wanted to show you in the documentation where it is so that you can uh, know how to navigate the documentation a bit um. and uh, so if you go here, um, you can see that there is, for instance, manipulate, display, if you want to format things in different, uh, in different ways, uh, but there is also query. And under query, you have a series of options, like is before, is after, is same date, is same or before, same or after, is between, to date. Some of these are working from natively, others need a plugin to be installed, but it's written in this case. And so in this case, we need is after, because we need to check if a date is after another date, and if so, we can store it, we can return it. And it's a DJS object dot is after another DJS object. And he's doing a comparison. If we want to have a finer grade, we can check where we, go, we do the comparison. We can do the comparison at the month level, at year level. So it's one date after another according to the year, according to the month, according to the date, according to the seconds, or just in general, is one date after the other. Hmm? That's the default. So in our case, we just want the default. Check if today is after yesterday. And if it is, keep that answer. Hmm? So, DJS object is after another DJS object. So, uh, answer dot date, because we need the data DJS object, and we know that date is a DJS object, because we created that in the constructor, dot is after, and here we need to put the other date. The date passes a parameter hmm? that must be a DJS object, clearly. Hmm? So we can assume that we receive a DJS object, or like we did before, we can, we can ask for a string and here doing the comparison. Hmm? But in both cases, we need to have a, a DJS object. So let's keep like this and let's pass a DJS object this time, but again. Okay, and this is after date. Then we have a list by date. Return an array of answer sorted by increasing date. So this dot list by date equal, we need no parameter actually, and so what, how we are we going to list things by date? In this case, we don't need a um, functional method, right? Use 
uh, we maybe could, but it, we need to list by date. We already have a function to do that. Sort. So yes, we can re-implement sort if you want, but let's try to use sort. So what do we need to write here? Return this dot answer dot sort. Okay. But sort is sorting elements. Sort is not one of the functional methods, right? We said that functional methods return a new array or nothing, like for each. Sort is not among them. Sort, if you look in the documentation, we don't for time purpose, but if you look in the documentation, sort also here. Sorts an array in a place. So we don't want to sort the array in place. We want to have a copy of the array sorted and we want to preserve the original array, right? Because the exercise say, returns an array of answers sorted by. So we want to preserve the original array because if you want to sort in other way or get other things, we don't care if it's sorted or not. We want to preserve the original order. So sort is acting in place. We need a copy. So what we are going to do? Without changing method. Yes, map will return a new array, but we already have the sort, so use, let's use sort. We need a new array. Yes, but that is after. If we want, sort is changing the array in place. We want to get a new array. Copy. Array of the spread operator. These are the three options. So the spread operator is the quicker hmm, of the three. But yes, we need to create a new array. This is the quickest way to create a new array. An array of will create a new array and then we will need to pass it. But here we will sort on a copy and then we return the copy. Hmm? And then yes, now we have to use some methods they to, to, to sort it by date. Hmm? So if you remember, sort as a two parameter, that they call it A and B, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, okay. And hmm? and it say, let's pick here. The callback is expected to return a negative value if the first argument is less than the second argument, zero if they are equal, or a positive value otherwise. Hmm? If omitted, they are alphabetically sorted, as we have seen last time. Hmm? So for dates, if we want to use uh, is after, as before, we can say a dot date dot is after. So this is comparing two elements of the array. B dot date. Hmm? So is is after. We can return a positive value one. Otherwise, we can return a negative value. Let me move this here. Mm, so ternary operator, if the first is true, then uh, return one, otherwise return the other element. Uh, we don't have the similar in this case, yes. No big deal for dates. I mean, if it's today, today this is the same date as if one before the other, you know, it's the same date, so 
the important thing is that today is uh, before tomorrow and um, after yesterday. In this case, not a big deal. Okay? So we can do, and then we can try everything. We can do the other one that is this dot list by score that is hmm, idem but by decreasing score. So this is the, the normal, let's say, sort, just inverted, this dot answers dot sort a b and uh, b dot score minus a dot score because it's inverted order So exactly like by date, but instead of comparing dates, we are comparing numbers. So we are in the in the normal case where A and B are the elements and score are the numbers. So 0, 5, 10. We created a bunch of scores. Why do we need to work on a copy each time? We return a copy. We not work on a copy. We, we create a copy, we sort a copy, and then return the copy. Because sort is changing element in place. Hmm? So, and we want to preserve the original array and return the sorted copy. Why not? It's, well, okay, in this case, in this specific case, there will be no strict need to preserve the original array. Clearly, if we sort by date and then after we sort by score and then after we filter and then we add an element in, in the end, the fact that they are sorted or not is not really important because you continue to change the array. But if we want to return a sorted, so it say returns an array of answer, it not return the answer sorted, right? It's return another array of answers. So in this case, is returning another array of answers. Hmm? So in this case, we preserve the original one just for say, okay, this is the original one. We are not touching it, and we are copying also. But is there's no strict reason to do that in this specific program, but also for um, similarity. So after dates, it returns a new array by default, because filter returns a new array. And this filter returns a new array. So it makes sense that the other two methods returns a new array. So that it's not the developer that to remember, oh, this is in place, this is not. It's always a copy. So if you manipulate the copy, you are sure that you are not changing the original array. Because on CF array can delete things, right? This is a copy. So it can safely delete things. In the other way, I'm yeah, deleting the actual answers from the question, so it's not something that you want to, OK? Other questions? Otherwise, we, we can try this. Yes. Sorry, uh, this guy, I didn't get the syntax of uh, list by date, uh, the sort, uh, where there is the question mark. Uh, okay, so this is a ternary operator. Let's say, it's going to say if a, um, let's say greater than b, then a, otherwise b. No, let me tell you again. If A major B is true, then A. Otherwise, B. 
this is like writing if date is after b return one else return minus one There is. Yes, this is returning true or false. This is the condition. Okay. So if this is true, return one. <coughs> if this is false, return as minus one. It's the ternary operation like you have in C. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this again is equivalent to say if a else uh, well not a um, return one else uh, return minus one with the appropriate semicolon in place clearly and parentheses well you get the, the meaning it's just a shorter way to write this if it's always possible this is ternary operator. Any other questions? Otherwise, we can try if this, all of this work. Okay, let's try if all this work. So, uh, we created the questions. So, let's try with console.log. with console dot log. Um, <laughs> questions dot find <coughs> Luca for instance that we have one answer from this person and then we can also try with question dot list by date and questions list by score we have another one after date And dot after date. And let's put a date. So 7 of February, 15 of February, let's say after the 1st of March. So you, we should have two. So let's say after the end of February, 2023. 0, 0, 0, 28. Okay, and so let's run this. So we want find, in this case, we have one answer, and then we want to list everything by date, by score, and get all the one after a given date. Okay, always formatted not very well, but let's go back. So the first one is asking for all the um, answer by Luca, and here we have one answer by Luca that starts here, and that's it. Hmm? Because this parenthesis is the first console log. The second one is a list by date, so let's check. Um, 15 of, of February. Um, 2 of March, 2 of, uh, 2 of March, and that's it, because there were three. Actually, they were already in, this, in the right order. We can switch it. And then the third one was by score. So we get the first is Guido Morosso, because it's 10. It's not anymore uh, the answer by Luca, but by Guido. So the score is five, sorry, five, and then we have zero, and then we have minus 10. And then finally, we have after date, end of February, we should have this one because it's the 2nd of March, and my answer, it was the 2nd of March. And not any answer, not others answer because we're in February, the other answers. So all, all the things work. Clearly, this is not well formatted, but... Um, mm? 
Mm? So if we want to format it, let, let's do also this. If we want to format it in a better way, how can we do? We mentioned that last time, but we didn't do it. How can we better format those things? Define a to string function. This dot to string, exactly as the others, and you can return. So this is the questions. So you can return something like um, return string literal, so that we can create new lines. Um, so questions. And this is this does text uh, asked by here we can put everything we want by name uh, on um, this dot date. And that's it, these are the information about the questions, and then we also uh, put the answers. So we can do a new line and say it received, received. Um, we can also count how many answer. So it received uh, uh, these dot answers uh, dot length uh, answers. Uh, so far, and then we can add the answers. For instance. Hmm? And then we can do the, the same for the answers, otherwise this will not be printed correctly. Hmm? And so we go up no, we don't go up. <laughs> we will go up and write the same thing. So like return, uh, I don't know, um, person replied to, replied these things on a certain date and get the score of X, something like that. So to string return this dot name in the answer etc. And so these will be interpolated with the two string of the answer, one for each element of the array. And then the two string needs either to call explicitly or, or not, it depends on where you're going to use it. Can I go up here? Not for everybody. Did you finish copy here? Yes, no? Yes, okay. So, in answer, we will need to do this dot to string return like before. Uh, what we said, we said the name this dot name replied this dot uh, text on this dot date uh, and get a score of this dot score. That's easier. Hmm? So if we run these. I'm not changing the screen, but if we run this, we see that nothing had changed. 
in this case, in the results, because automatically the console log like this is not calling the to string. So either, so if you just do console log of a function, will not call the to string. So either you call it the to string explicitly, or it's calling the to string if there is a string in the console log. Hmm? So if we write here um, answers by Luca like this, that will call automatically the to string on the results. Hmm? And the same as, as the other. Uh, list by date list by score or you can use to string as you prefer and so here for instance we can say to string just to no let's let's print it properly uh, so after uh, February and we can also do a new line at the beginning so that is printed in a more reasonable way mm -hmm. so if we run this we see our representation mm -hmm. so for instance after February we say that auto replied not in a millionaire on date and got a score of five and then since this is an array there is the comma that is the elements of the array the second the other person replied another things on another date and got a score of another score and same things for list by score same things for this by, by date and answer by Luca there is just one elements that is the uh, elements the answer the single answer by Luca and notice how dates are formatted by default into string. This is the default formatting. And so since we wrote, well, we, we are operating with answers, but it's the same for questions. Since we wrote this dot date, this is calling the to string of the JS, the normal to string of the JS. Let's say a short version of the day of the week, day, month, year, hour in UTC time. And it's written GMT. So if you want to format it differently, you can use the dot format. And you can decide where you format so for instance you can say here 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 month month and day day and that case would be formatted in this case with without the day of the week without the hours etc this format is picking a string and formatting the results as you prefer hmm? so if we run this now hmm, you see that the data are actually 2023-0302 without the day, without everything. So applying our formatting. And moving back in our time zone. Because first was one, first March, 11 p.m. UTC time, and now it's two of March. So the current date, the date that we inserted at the beginning not the GMT representation, but the locale version of the date. And this is in the format. So, and this completes the exercise. Any questions about this? Yes.
it doesn't, so let me. Yes, it doesn't. Um, not that came to my mind, actually, in this moment. I can check uh, because it's more a problem of probably documentation and in integrating documentation that came from um, from DJS from from here, actually. Um, it's not moving down, but I can check. I don't. I don't have an answer now, but. But then it, then it works, so it's, the link is done, it's just in the writing time that, that Visual Studio Code doesn't know that this is a data object, a DJS object. So it's more a Visual Studio Code problem than not. <coughs> okay, so let me spend the last five minutes, really five minutes, just to say two things about asynchronous programming, because it's a long, complicated topic, so just the first things and then we will continue next week. So, up to now we have used synchronous function. All of this is synchronous. Uh, and, and synchronous is good for JavaScript, because JavaScript is actually uh, single-threaded. And so synchronous by definition, because it has just one thread and everything is running that thread. Um, so by default in JavaScript, you cannot have multiple threads. You just have one thread, one process, and everything is running there. So everything is synchronous by definition. Uh, but uh, JavaScript has the possibility to have a synchronous code. So codes that behave in an asynchronous way. Hmm? And callbacks are the fundamental way to write a synchronous code in JavaScript. Hmm? So, for instance, here, there is this method called setThemout. Hmm? This setThemout receive a callback that's called delete after themeout. that will do something, we don't really care, and a time after which this callback needs to be called. Hmm? So, in this case, if, if we run this code, we complete this code and we run this code, we say that uh, after, hmm, so we execute this, so nothing, we process this, we call set them out, and then we do the other line, the next line. Hmm? So the program continue, and after around two seconds, 2000 millisecond, the delete after them out function is called. Hmm? So, this is an asynchronous behavior because the program is running, doing its own business, and after two seconds, more or less, something happened that, is, that was written before, so written not in a, in a synchronous way. Hmm? So, but JavaScript is single thread. So, this is not another thread. This is still running in the thread. So, how it's possible to have a synchronicity? No, not because of, it's too complex, no. Not because of interruption of, of hardware. So this set them out is just uh, a them out, but you can do all other things uh, asynchronous. So most of the things in the web that we're going to do are asynchronous. Think how a website works. When you have, um, when you click on a button, and we, this is doing some computation, it's not that the page freeze. You can still continue to navigate the page. If it's loading a carousel, the, you can read the other things in the page. You can scroll. You can move things around. And even if it's not yet loaded, you can still navigate the page. Hmm? So if, it's, if you log in in a web application, it's not that you are stuck in a screen block that you cannot do anything. It may be saying processing. It's telling you that it's waiting for data information maybe getting from a server, but it's doing something under the hood. And all of this is done in a synchronous way, because otherwise the application will stuck there. Hmm? But again, JavaScript is not synchronous by definition. And all of this is possible in a software level, thanks to the execution environment and a concept that JavaScript has that is the event loop. Hmm? So this is not given by the language, but it's given by the execution environment. So Node.js is an execution environment. 
the browser is an execution environment with their own methods, as we said two weeks ago, last week. And then there is this concept of the event loop that is not yet here. But the idea is that JavaScript operate in a loop. So when there is some things that are that to be done asynchronously, it just put in another position. And there is a loop that check if there is something that needs to be operated. So the code is operated synchronously, and then at a certain time, something that was there waiting is put back in the chain of execution in a, in a synchronous way, and then executed in that time. We, there, is, there is a picture that we're going to see next week. But this is called event loop because it's actually a loop that continues to check there is code here to operate synchronous or there is things that need to happen now that was programmed before but is not yet happening for this moment. There is two seconds passed or there is new data coming from a database. So I query a database and then I, wait, I need to wait for the answer from the database. And I cannot stack everything until the database does all its own queries. So I need to proceed with my program and wait for this information. And when these information are ready, I need to process them, not before they are ready. So all of this is possible thanks to this event loop that check that. And this also means that after two seconds will never be after exactly two seconds. It will be more or less after two seconds, because after two seconds they are put back in the normal flow execution. And, but maybe it's not executed immediately, it will be executed after a few CPU cycles. So it will be two seconds and something. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, how a synchronicity is possible. We will see better. Uh, but a synchronicity, as I said before, is fundamental because otherwise we won't want to block the execution, mm -hmm. especially in the web. So if we read a long file from the disk, if we access a database, we cannot block our application while we get the answer. We, Everything else should, have, should work. We can click on, on other elements of the page. We can scroll. We can see images. We can run video. We can watch video. And things happen. And then at a certain point, we have new information. We will manipulate this new information. Mm? So all of this is asynchronous. And asynchronous is a big part because we don't want to block a web application in general. And most of the JavaScript execution environment are asynchronous and most of the methods, there are a bunch of methods like set them out that are asynchronous because they are non-blocking. Mm? So promising things that will happen in the future and then when the things will happen, you will get the data and you will get operate with the results. Mm? And JavaScript is much, especially for the web, event driven. So something happens and you have to react on what happens. So when a person click is an event that is asynchronous in a way because you cannot predict when I'm clicking a button. And I'm clicking a button in a moment that is different when he is clicking the same button. So all of these needs to be, the program should be ready to listen for the buttons and operate in that moment to uh, perform the operation on the button. And if, if it's doing other things like showing images in a carousel, it, it should continue to do these other things while I'm clicking a button. So all these operations should happen in parallel and they are event driven because there is an event typically from a person that is doing something, like clicking a button, scrolling, typing something in a screen, opening a file, making a request, etc. So all of this is for the synchronous part that we will go deep and we see how to handle with callbacks, with the same callbacks we have seen, but how to handle better next week. So just a reminder, on Thursday there will be the first lab, room 5. I, um, I get a message that uh, power outlets in that room are sparse present. Uh, I will check if we can, in the future, do something with that room, like change the room. But currently we have that room and so on Thursday we will have a um, lab in that room. We have power outlets in that room just a few of them per line and not one of each um, desk. We, I will check if we can have an, an upgrade, but right now we have that room, okay? So uh, we can meet next, next week and have a nice week and a good lab for Thursday.